What is going on, y'all? Robert Sykes coming back at you with the Keto Bulk Reset Update. So this is week 24, reset week 13. And we're going to talk a little bit more about mindset. This one's going to be a little bit different than prior videos. But real quick, I just want to give you a super simple update on the numbers. Um, just we'll dive into the, the chronometer here. Um, here's my weight change trending down, energy overall trending down, had a little bit of a hiccup here. I was traveling this past week, so with that said, um, I had a few higher days, not like a refeed day. What I've been doing is having one legitimate refeed day a week, in which case I'm consuming about 1,000 calories over baseline. Um, this week, I did not do this. Past week, I did not do that. I probably had like Monday and Saturday or Friday, I was like two or 300 calories over both of those days. So the total caloric intake over baseline was probably between six and 800 calories, so less than what it would be had it been a standalone refeed, um, but just a greater frequency. Not optimal, but again, I was traveling, so that just kind of was what it was. Um, so here is my energy consumed. Here's my weight trend. If we go into the AI dashboard here, you can cast this a little bit more visually appealing. So weight trending down, had that little blip, and then trending down again. Um, fat still dropping, protein still increasing. I'm going to be at about 180 grams of fat and about 210 grams of protein this week. Um, carbs are staying pretty low, about 20 grams total carbs. Calories are dropping still north of 2,500. Uh, so feel pretty good there. We're going to be at about, um, let's see here. That is not supposed to be, let me update that real quick. That's not supposed to be 2,400 calories. Edit. Fat is going to be 180, 210 protein, cement that bad boy. That's going to put us at about 2540 on the calories. Weight today was 192.2. According to the in body, I was 17.1. So on that note, and I'll throw up some pictures here while I'm talking, uh, current pictures taken today. So today I was 17.1 via the in body at about the same weight. The last time I did the in body, about 192 pounds. And the last time I did the in body, it was 21%. Now, does that mean I went from 21% to 17% in the matter of a week or two? No, of course not. My weight and my weight's the same. My body composition is pretty much the same as well. I didn't gain a whole bunch of lean mass or lose a bunch of body fat. That's just simply fluctuations in fluid and honestly, just little bitty variables. Like I worked out a little bit today prior to jumping on the in body, so my body heat was a little bit warmer. That's going to cause a fluctuation. So, People get so hung up on biological impedance scans. That's what pretty much every bathroom scale is. Uh, the in body that I have does measure hand and foot electrodes. So it's more accurate than one that's just measuring through the feet and estimating the upper body. But don't let that make or break your day. Like, just as it wouldn't make sense for me to be all celebratory today, saying that, oh, I went from 21% to 17%, I'm getting jacked, my lean mass went up. That's not any more true than me having the high 21% body fat that it showed last time and less lean tissue. Neither one is right. Neither one is worth celebrating over or getting all frustrated about and losing sleep over. There's just going to be variations and fluctuations in time. My actual weight is the same. My actual composition is pretty much the same as well. Um, my training is pretty much holding stable too. So put a lot more stock in that, put more stock in what the pictures are showing, put more stock in what you're feeling than what the actual number is. Definitely use those numbers, track those numbers, document those numbers, have that data at your fingertips as you make adjustments over time with your macros and your training and your cardio, but don't like let those numbers make or break your day. So there's my little rant on that. Again, those were pictures that were just taken today. Um, at an estimated body fat of 17.1% via the in body scale. So how is this one going to be a little bit different than the other videos? We're talking a little bit about mindset today. Um, I, I went for a run this past weekend. I ran 3.4 miles on a whim. I normally do a weekly trail run. Um, that's normally a, about a mile to a mile and a half. That day I just woke up and I was feeling frustrated. I felt like I was just sloppy. I just felt sloppy, and I was mad at myself. So I'm like, I'm just going to go run to the trail, run the trail, and then run back home. So it was a longer run than normal at 3.4 miles, and I sprinted the end to the gate at the house. And that whole run, while nothing to write home about, is kind of an analogy or a metaphor 
for how I'm feeling right now with all things in life. I'm just frustrated. We've all got our own unique perspective. We've all got our own unique stance and belief systems in life and who we are. And it doesn't make any difference what anybody thinks about me if I myself am not happy and proud of what I'm accomplishing. So what do I mean by that? This holds true for everybody, but I use myself as an example because I can speak of myself. So people may look at what I'm doing. They may be very impressed by my adherence to the ketogenic diet without deviation, my consistent weight training, my consistent cardio, the business, whatever the case may be. They may be able to look at my life and be like, okay, he's got it all together. But I know if I'm pushing hard or not, and I have been unhappy with what I'm doing. I mean, yes, I am pushing. Yes, I'm doing a lot of different things, but I feel like everything in my life is just substandard, subpar, not optimal. It is mediocre at best. And again, somebody else may say, oh, you're doing great. If you think you're mediocre, how can I possibly live with myself? That's not what I'm trying to say at all. Everybody's got their own unique perspective. The hardest thing you've ever done is, is always the hardest thing you've ever done. So don't compare yourself to me or anybody else for that matter. But me, I know what I'm capable of, and I know that I am not delivering on that right now. And there's there's seasons in life. There are times when it's time to hustle. There are times when it's time to relax. There's times when it's important to be present. And everything has a season. Everything is cyclical. But I am not performing in the way that I want to perform with any of the things that I'm trying to focus on right now. And that is a frustration for me. Last year when I was in my prep, I had a very specific goal at hand. Every single day I woke up and I went to war. I am in a sense doing that now, but not to the extent that I would like to. So I am about to crank it up a notch. And I'm not just going to crank it up a notch with the physical area of my life, but with everything in my life. And everybody's different, obviously, like I just said. But for me, I don't find fulfillment or peace or happiness or enjoyment or excitement when I am relaxed. Like, I need to be working. I need to be, like, look at dogs. Like, you've got some breeds of dogs that are totally happy just sitting on the couch, chilling out and snoozing all day. You got people like that, too. That, that, that fills their cup for whatever reason. Then you've got other breeds of dogs that are freaking work dogs. They're not going to be happy unless they have a task and they have a job and they are, they are performing on that task. That is me. I need to have a job. I need to have an objective. I need to have a goal. I need to be working towards it in some form or fashion every single day without fail. And I've got several things in my life that I want to excel at. I've got my whole 10 segregate model, my, my uh, spirituality, health, wealth, relationships, self-development. Those five pillars are like my whole 10 segregate model. And I have very tangible things that I want to excel at within each of those five pillars. And I don't feel like I'm giving any of those my utmost right now. So I'm going to crank it up a notch and deliver and do just that. As it pertains to the training and the nutrition, I'm honestly pretty impressed with how I've been doing the nutrition. Like I'm tracking everything. I'm still dialed in. I'm, I'm not deviating. Um, I mean, my nutrition is pretty dialed in, but I need to get more optimized with the training, have like a very specific roadmap, um, and just kind of get them some things polished there, which is what I'm going to do in that regard. Most of what I really want to excel at is as it pertains to the business um, and the relationships the spirituality, and also the training component. I honestly wouldn't really change anything that I'm doing with the nutrition component. But that's kind of where I'm at right now with things mentally. Uh, and again, that, that run was a metaphor for all of this because you know, I went on an extended run and then I sprinted to the finish. And like I could have not sprinted and it still would have been quote unquote better than I had been because it was significantly longer than what my typical one to one and a half miles is. But I don't want to just be average. I don't want to just be mediocre. I know I could have sprinted, so I did. And because I did, I felt more accomplished. And I want that same thing to hold true with everything that I do. How you do anything in life is how you do everything in life. And if you start cutting the corners, if you start slacking off, if you start taking the easy path, it becomes that much easier to do it a second, third, or fourth time. So screw that. Let's freaking buckle up and grind. Let's make something of ourselves and let's get to work. So I'm about to execute and I'm about to elevate. Get ready.